All right, this piece was composed by Julio Segreras. So he was an Argentine composer who lived from 1879 to 1942. He was not only a guitarist, but he was also a teacher and he composed tons of pieces. He also created an educational series for guitarists that start at the very beginning all the way up through the advanced level. And so this was a seven volume series. It's a great series and, and many people still use it today. All right, this piece was composed in the style of a mazurka. The mazurka is a Polish dance. One of my personal favorite composers composed a lot of mazurkas and that is Chopin. Generally a mazurka is gonna be triple time, fairly lively, and often with accents on either beats two or beat three. The sheet music and tab is available in my guitar school music. Check it out. So slowly the first line goes like this. All right, so if you take a look at this first measure, I start with my third finger down and my first finger down. So you're just gonna go thumb, middle finger, thumb, middle finger. And then I let go of that and then a half bar at five. Pinky goes up, and then back to fifth position, pinky, and then a half bar. Now one thing you notice is the way it's notated is those bass notes are supposed to be stopped. They're only, they only last one beat. So I do try and stop them as much as I can. Sometimes they do ring. Um, for the most part, the bass fits in the harmony. So if it does continue to ring, it's not gonna sound bad. But I will use a couple different techniques to stop the sound. So if you take a look at this measure, I start off here and then I bring my finger, technically you only need a half bar, but I'll bring it farther stop that string, that fifth string. So I'll go, and I put that down, and it stops that fifth string from ringing. Here I might use my thumb to stop it, and then sometimes I'll use my a finger that's free to just deaden that open string. So slowly you've got So thumb stops. Well, there's a variety of different ways that you can stop those strings from ringing. So this repeats again. Third finger, open, half bar at two, D minor chord. Measure nine. So this is also a D minor chord right here. So I end up, for the eighth note, I bring my first finger up to the sixth fret. I keep everything else down. And then my pinky goes down. So slowly that measure goes. Again. Open. Back to this chord again. Pinky goes down. Half bar at five. So slowly that line goes like this. Measure 13. Now pinky goes up, we're gonna form this diminished chord. So it's... So again, from measure 13 we've got Everything stays, except we're gonna move the first finger around. And then a half bar. All right, then most of what we just covered repeats again. So it's all. Now in measure 29, this all changes. We've got. Pinky goes down, one and three. Pinky goes up, back to one and three. Pinky goes down, half bar. So slowly, measure 29, you've got this. And 
And that is the first section of this piece. All right, so take a look at measure 33. We have a new section. If you start with C major, you are all set. <laughs> Middle finger goes here. I do keep my first finger down because we're going to just take these two fingers, move them up, and then back down. So again, cool sounding chord. So this is an A sharp diminished chord. So you've got this. Remember with pull-offs, you don't want to pull straight off because you won't get much of a sound. But it's more you're pulling down, plucking that string with the left hand. So slowly, it's like falling off a log. Middle finger, first finger. third finger. You can use your second finger there if it's too much of a stretch. Repeats. Now's where it changes. So what I do is I have a full bar at one, second finger, pinky goes down. So if you can't do the bar, there's another way of doing it. So you can go like that, use your third and second fingers, and then go like that. So, or with the bar, third finger, pinky and first finger go down, first finger, second, pinky goes down, C chord. So slowly those two measures go like this. So we're going to go from the C chord to this right here. That is a G7 chord. So if you count, you're going to go like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then sometimes what I'll do is I will go back to measure 33 and just repeat that all again before doing the DC al fine. So DC al fine means to go back to the beginning and then you end at the fine or the finish, which you can find at measure 32. Now, one thing I find when ending this piece is it ends rather abruptly the way it's written. So, um, and I've tried, I've recorded this a couple times, trying to figure out which way I like the best because you could do this. Or you could do a little retardando, something like this. and bring it to an end that way. So great piece, beautiful melody, wonderful composer. Enjoy, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can contact me through my website. Good luck.